Hi, this is Jim Clary, and again, welcome to our YouTube video, AirMod Training. In this video, Sarah will first describe the input file, then we'll give you the opportunity to pause your computer while you get to your modeling example directory and get ready to execute it, and then you can follow her along as we go through the execution using that input file to generate an input file that will be used later on in the AirMod system. Just one quick reminder, you'll see that the explanation of the input file can get rather detailed. Uh, don't be too concerned about it at this point, because remember, uh, a real advantage of these videos is you can always go back to them for reference as you need to as you work through your actual projects. So I suggest that in this one, that you just follow along with Sarah. It'll give you a good broad um, idea of what the input file looks like, but uh, don't be too concerned about sweating all the details at this point. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Sarah. I'm Sarah with airmodtraining.com. I'm going to show you how to set up and run AirMet in this training video. AirMod requires meteorological data that are generated using AirMet. Before you can run AirMet, you will need to generate the surface characteristics using AirSurface and the 1 minute ASOS wind data from AirMinute. For more detailed information on these preprocessors, please see our videos on how to set up and run AirMinute and AirSurface. AirMet is the only preprocessor that is split into three different stages. AirMet is EPA's meteorological data preprocessor for the AirMod model. AirMet processes freely available National Weather Service data or site-specific meteorological data. AirMet generates a surface and profile meteorological data files that are read by AirMod. And the example we're going over is based on data from 2014. The hourly surface data and one-minute wind data are from the San Luis Valley Regional Airport slash Bergman Field located in Alamosa, Colorado. The upper air data are from the Grand Junction Regional Airport located in Grand Junction, Colorado. As mentioned, AirMet is split into three stages and each stage has its own input file. We'll go over those input files now and then we'll go run AirMet. The AirMet Stage 1 input file is named ALS underscore 2014 underscore S1.INP. This stage extracts and quality assures the upper air sounding data and standard hourly surface data. This input file is grouped into four sections. The job section is where you specify the information that is used throughout the entire run. The upper air section is where the National Weather Service upper air sounding data will be extracted and quality assured. The surface section is where you extract and quality assure the National Weather Service hourly surface meteorological data. The on-site section is where you would extract and quality assure the site-specific hourly surface observations. The on-site section is optional and is only needed if you have site-specific surface observations. We are not using site-specific data in our example, so this section can be omitted. The report keyword is used to specify the file name where all the summary information is written, and the messages keyword specifies the file name where any error, warning, and informational messages are written. Under the data keyword, first list the file that contains the upper air sounding data. Our file is located in the UA folder, so we include that in the file name. Next, list the data file format. The data are in the Forecast Systems Laboratory, or FSL, format. The extract keyword is used to specify the file name where the extracted sounding data will be written. The X dates keyword is used to define the period that you would want to extract from the sounding data. Keep in mind that we need to convert the data from Greenwich time to local time, so note that we included January 1st from 2015. Under the location keyword, first list the five digit WBAN ID. Then list the latitude and longitude. Follow it by the time adjustment, which is the number of time zones the facility is away from Greenwich time. Areas west of Greenwich will have a positive time adjustment. Our example facility is seven time zones to the west of Greenwich. 
The QA out keyword is where you specify the file name where the quality assured upper air sounding data will be written. The variables listed under the audit keyword will be tracked and reported during the quality assessment. We're auditing the temperature, wind speed, lapse rate, and the wind direction. Next, we have the surface section, which is very similar to the upper air section. Under the data keyword, first list the file that contains the hourly surface data. Our file is located in the surface folder, so we include that with the file name. Next, list the data format, which are in the integrated surface hourly data or ISHD format. Next, the extract keyword is used to specify the file name where the extracted surface data will be written. We define the same extraction dates as the upper air section. Under the location keyword, we list the five digit WBAN ID, followed by the latitude and longitude, then the time zone adjustment, then the elevation in meters of the meteorological station. The QA out keyword is where you specify the file name that will contain the quality assured surface data. The file names that are defined with the QA out keyword become the input files in the stage two processing. The variables listed under the audit keyword will be tracked and reported during the quality assessment. We're auditing the sea level pressure, station pressure, ceiling height, sky cover, present weather, ASOS sky condition, horizontal visibility, dry bulb temperature, and the relative humidity. The no missing keyword is used to suppress missing data messages. We chose to suppress the messages for the station pressure. The stage two input file name is ALS underscore 2014 underscore S2 IMP. The only purpose of stage two is to merge the surface one minute ASOS and upper air data into a single file. There can be six sections in the stage two input file, but again, the on-site section is optional and is only needed if you have site specific data. So we have five sections listed here. The job section is where you specify the information that is used throughout the entire run. And the upper air section is where you specify the upper air sounding data file. The surface section is where you specify the hourly surface observations data file. And the ASOS one min section is where you specify the one minute ASOS wind data file. The merge section is where you specify the output file information. The report keyword is used to specify the file name where all the summary information is written and the messages keyword specifies the file name where all the error, warning, and informational messages are written. The QA out keyword specifies the files with quality assured upper air sounding and hourly surface observation data. Both of these files are generated in the stage one processing. Next list the file with the one minute ASOS wind data. This is the file that is output by air minute and that's why you need to run air minute before you can run air met. In the merge section, define the output file name under the output keyword. This file will be input into the stage three processing. Then specify the dates that you wanna have for the modeling under the X dates keyword. The data was converted to local time in stage one, so we don't need to include data from 2015 anymore. And our data period is from January 1st to December 31st, 2014. The stage three input file name is ALS underscore 2014 underscore S3 dot IMP. Stage three processes the meteorological data and generates the surface and profile meteorological data files that will be input into AirMod. Stage three has two sections. The job section is where you specify the information that is used throughout the entire run. And the met prep section is where you specify the meteorological processing options. The report keyword is used to specify the file name where all the summary information is written and the messages keyword specifies the file name where all of the errors, warning, and informational messages are written. The data keyword is used to specify the file where all the, of the meteorological data was merged. This is the output file from stage two. 
The method keyword is used to specify the processing options and they do not need to be grouped together. We listed three of the common processing options here. The first option is ref level followed by sub and WS. When this option is specified, AirMet uses the standard hourly wind speed and wind direction in the event that the one minute data is missing for that hour. The next option specifies to randomize the wind direction. This option is needed because the wind direction in the standard hourly data file were rounded to the nearest 10 degrees, and this option is not applicable to the ASOS one minute data. The next option is the upper air selection option, followed by the sunrise option. This option specifies that the upper air sounding that is closest to sunrise will be used to calculate the boundary layer parameters. The NWS underscore HDT keyword is used to specify the National Weather Service instrument height in meters for the specified variable. In this case, we specified that the wind data was measured at 10 meters. This parameter is mandatory if the ref level sub NWS option is used. The air surf keyword specifies a file that contains the surface characteristics. We have the path to the file and the file name listed here. This file was generated by air surface, so again, that's why we need to run air surface before we run air met. The output keyword is used to specify the file where the surface meteorological data will be written. And the profile keyword is used to specify the file where the profile meteorological data will be written. And these two files are the files that will be input into AirMod. Thank you, Sarah, for that excellent explanation of the input files. We're now ready to, for you to actually run the program that will generate an output file that will be used later on as we move through the AirMod modeling system. So put this on pause until you're ready, you've got your computer ready, you've got your modeling um, directory open, and you're ready to follow Sarah along as she walks you through the program execution. To run AirMet, we need to go to the AirMet directory. You can see we have the three input files that we discussed earlier, and the upper air data file is in the UA folder, and the surface data file is in the surface folder. To run AirMet, you can double click on this batch file, but since there's a three different stages, I'm actually going to show you first step-by-step step in the command prompt how to run the three different stages. So AirMet requires that the input file be named airmet.imp. So we first must copy the stage one input file to airmet.imp. To run the program, we need to navigate to that directory and type the executable name and then hit enter. You can see it's extracting the upper air data and then it's going to QA the upper air data, then extract the surface data and then QA the surface data. Okay, at the end of stage one, it shows us here that it was processed successfully and looking back to File Explorer, you can see the additional files that were created by running stage one. So a few of the key ones, if you remember, we had the message and the report files right here that will have any, inf any information from running the program in it. But the other ones that we're interested in are the SF QA out and the UA QA out. Those are going to be the files that are input into the stage two processing. So now for stage two, we need a copy the stage two input file to airmet.inp. Okay, and then again, we need to navigate to the folder that contains the airmet executable and then hit enter. So this stage again merged the upper air surface and one minute ASOS data. And again, we have the message that stage two ran successfully. So over here in the file explorer, you can see we have our message and report files. And then the output file from stage two is the merge 2014. And this is the file that will be input into the stage three processing. Okay, for the last stage, 
we need to copy the stage 3 input file to airmat.inp and then type the path to the executable. And this is where the meteorological data is processed and we're shown that it was processed successfully. And it's at this point I also like to delete the airmet.inp file just to clear up the folder. So going back to File Explorer, the stage 3 also generates the two input files that will be read by AirMod. So we have the als2014.pfl and .sfc files here. And then as mentioned, you can use the batch file to run the program and it will quickly go through all the options. So I'm just going to double click it here so you can see how fast it goes. So this is still stage one. It's queuing the surface data. Now it's merging the data and now we're processing it in stage three. So it's over that quickly and again, the output data are going to be the same. We have the two files here that can be read into AirMod. Now we're going to go over the report file from each stage. First, we'll do stage one. So we have a message here that it was set up successfully then it tells you the different options throughout each of the sections. And then it has a summary of the QA audit here. We listed these variables under the audit keyword. So they show up here. Next we have the audit information on the surface data. So again, these are the variables that we listed under the audit keyword in the input file. Scrolling down, it gives you information on if there was any calm wind conditions. And at the bottom, it summarizes any of the messages that were generated. Next, we will go to the stage two report. So again, we have the summary information for each of the sections. And then it gives you the statistics on the different data that were merged for each day in the data period. So this can be a few pages long depending on your data period length. And then it determines if you used air minute data or not. And then it will give the ASOS commission date for your station if you did use one minute ASOS data. Okay, next we will go to the stage three report. Same as the others, it summarizes the information for each of the sections. It also summarizes the processing options and also the surface characteristics that were read in by from air surface and also summarizes any of the messages that were generated. It gives you a summary of the calm variable winds and also air met substitutes cloud cover and temperature so those substitutions are summarized at the bottom as well. Since we're finished running AirMet, we now have the surface and profile files needed to run AirMod. If you run into a problem with any part of your AirMod modeling project, we offer online AirMod training help that you can purchase from airmodtraining.com. During our session, you'll be able to ask us any question related to your AirMod modeling project. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, AirMod Training, so you'll be notified when we upload any new videos. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.